the NDC in the Volta region. Then the Volta region was the Volta region and Uti region. I'm correct, right? Yes. yes. So he, he, he left that position and then he's now making a comeback at the national level. Good morning. And how are you? Good morning, my brother. How have you been doing? We're doing good. Hmm. In the midst of the... Uh, and I'm sure you're worried about what you're hearing every day when it comes to the country, the economy, and the difficulties that we are faced with. Uh, you have to be strong to encourage others who are weaker than you. Mm. Uh, because um, the biggest challenge that all of us are confronted with mm -hmm. is the constitution mm -hmm. of Ghana. Okay. But for the constitution of Ghana, Nanado government should have been dissolved with immediate effect by a mass action. And the dilemma of having to battle uh, democratically mm. whether or not we should wait up to 2024 and what would happen to the country from now to 2024. Mm. And so if you wake up with this nightmares you will only pray to God and encourage yourselves that okay. something mysterious will happen. Mm. As we speak today, I don't wish well for Nanado. You don't wish Nanado well? No. Please get closer to the mic for me. I, d I don't wish him well. The list of it. What do you mean when you say you don't wish him? I don't wish him well. Anyone whose actions would expose... I a country oh, called Ghana, a very boy. beautiful country mm. called Ghana, mm. to this level of hardship is a demon and not a human being. I don't see Nanado as a president. In the midst of it all, the fragrance display of arrogance, opulence, disrespect cannot be coming from a president who is not a young man that we can say exuberance mm. but an old man an astute politician someone I think have survived the waves of politics in Africa to deliberately plunge the nation into this kind of chaos because of selfishness, self-centeredness, greed and a mentality to just steal and dissipate the state with its coffers taking advantage of weak state systems is very unfortunate this is not a president Ghana deserves. On any day, look at how much how much prizes we buy fuel today. Look at dollar rates. Look at school fees. I can only imagine because you know, I'm a product of poverty. Mm. Where I come from, I'm a product of real poverty. So I have felt the pain of poverty from childhood. To sit here and to imagine the people who are going through all of this trauma. The pain that you walk on the streets of Accra and you don't have one seed in your pocket the whole day. Your, your mother or your father is lying in the hospital. You can't even get proper health care, let alone to have the money to pay. Not because God hasn't blessed this country. Not because we don't have people. Yes, we have a government that is, is, is MPP, led by MPP. This is a time to throw in the towel and call for maturity and, and reconciliation. This is a time to call for a roundtable discussion. I don't see Nanado doing that. They go and sit at Pediasi and to scheme and to cook how to come and lie. You know, some of us sit back and we boil. And I pray and wish that the NDC will come out of this reorganization stronger, prepared, organized, and willing to assemble the needed characters to deal with this kind of canker. Nanado does not deserve any sympathy from any Ghanaian at this time. We need to generate the necessary tension that is required to either get him out or get the country to its feet. If we wait 
till 2024, this country will go down. And I'm pleading with parliamentarians to immediately invoke an impeachment clause in the Constitution against this president. Even if they don't succeed, they should start the process and we will support them. Okay. That is the only way to save this. You can't keep Ken, who is very incompetent, a crook, a very dishonest state official, misrepresenting figures, remove the character. You said you will not. This is the first time members of a government, senior members of a government in parliament, will stage a press conference calling for the removal of a finance minister. The problems are deeper than we think and we know. Mm. The only solution is that we can't wait any longer to 2024. This man called Akufado must be impeached all together with this, his hulums and crooks he has assembled to dissipate what this country has. That is the only solution. Is it fair to call them that, knowing the yeah. fact that they, they have also been confronted with some crisis? Which people? The NPP. You know, I, I don't speak on economic figures, mm -hmm. but I have practical impact of this government. And I do know that no government has borrowed other than Nana Akufuado's government. I also do know the level of corruption that have taken place. Maybe a day you should invite me to talk about this government and its ministers. The rate at which they have stole state money with opulence, wanton disregard to systems, you will cry. Hmm. Well, uh, is Mustafa Bande is an aspirant for the Deputy General Secretary position of the National Democratic Congress. Have you uh, already, I hear nowadays you download the forms. Do you already have the forms? And have, uh, when are you filing? I have, I have, by the grace of God, mm -hmm. been able to uh, apply for a form. Mm -hmm. I have a form. I'm currently almost done with my endorsements. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for the date for filing to come. Mm -hmm. And I'll file to contest for the position of Deputy General Secretary to help this party in its operation. Mm. I, I want you to take me through the uh, sort of thought process you went through before deciding that you should contest for this posi position. Like I said, uh, if I'm not wrong, for about four years, yeah. you've not really been, uh, you've not held a political position. Yeah. That, that's four years, right? Yes. About about four more, years. Than, more than four years. More than about six years or so. If you've not held any position no. of sort. Um then all of a sudden you, you resurface and you decide that I want to hold the position of Deputy General Secretary. Mm. How did you come by that decision? You know, I, I served the party in several capacities. Okay. Those I can talk about and those I cannot talk about okay. because of my background and the kind of work that we do for the party. Okay. But I've served the party in the Volta region Sometimes it's important to take yourself out of the stage mm. and do self introspection. Okay. I love At some point, I, I had had myself uh, transiting from my religious belief from Islam into mm. Christianity. Okay. And I had to go through a spiritual exercise, a grooming, and a growth. Okay. And even that, we still you know, did operations for the party, except to say that um, our system was not consolidated enough mm -hmm. to have the trust efficacy that we can bring each other to execute an agenda. Okay. Well, what uh, do you mean by that? What it means is that if you check 2016, after mm -hmm. we lost election, mm -hmm. 2020, uh, we needed a well-coordinated front mm -hmm. We needed people to take responsibilities, all of us, to say, listen, we've lost election. Okay. We have to come together and work. That level of momentum wasn't there. Okay. We went into an election distressed. 
2016? Yes, 2020. 2020, not yes. 2016. No, 2016, we had just lost, and, and, and that one were in government. And if you are in government, a lot of things happen. Okay. You know, whether complacency or whatever it is. So that mistake happened, mm -hmm. and we came into 2020. Okay. So the pain was enough for all of us to see. Mm -hmm. But other people were still battling themselves as to whether or not they were convinced that we win election or we're not going to win election. Okay. And that that made our system very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. We needed to also understand that you have to go to a match mm -hmm. with players who has the skill set, not just playing football, but a skill set as against your opponents. Okay. So you can have the best kind of players, but if at the time they are playing, the skill set they have is not what is required to deal with your opponents, you go to the field and you'll be defeated. Okay. So that was those were some of the challenges that I think we got confronted with. Okay. Our national executives did their best. Uh, we had a very good flag bearer and, and, and a running mate. Mm -hmm. Except to say that we're dealing with criminals. Criminals? Yes. If you had to arrest a hardened criminal, you don't go and take just anybody. You, the police deploy what they call form police. They don't take the regular police. Mm -hmm. They take form police. Why don't they take the regular police? It's because the criminal you are dealing with is a hardened one. We all knew who MPP as a party is. We knew who their flag bearer was. We also knew that they would rig the election. It isn't because we had incompetent uh, uh, players at the time. Okay. We, had, we had very good people. But we needed a skill set to deal with them as opposed to what we have. Okay. And we didn't assemble that kind of a team. The team that was assembled was competent. They, are, they were competent. But when were not You the needed right people who had the, the courage to confront these people one on one. You see, when you go to the battlefield and you are dealing with a lion and you ignorantly see the lion as a rat, you have made yourself a pre even before the match starts. MPP and this current setup is not one that <laughs> you joke you play with. Okay. It's one that you should be willing to shoot if they shoot. It's one that you should be willing to beat if they beat. We all knew that they had assembled some hooligans within the security setup purposely to deal with our people. We had strongholds. What is our business holding press conferences and uh, uh, health works in Accra? We had strongholds. Go and do demonstration in your stronghold. <laughs> do you understand? Mm. So these were some of the things that I think that we didn't do. Mm. So I feel that, listen, let us mix characters. Okay. Let us put some ruthless people. Let's put some courageous people. Let's put some people who understand operations <laughs> to help the setup that we have. To confront this government so well, ruthlessly, as they have dealt with us in the past. I, have, I am one of the biggest victims of this government. I woke up one morning, went to work by 6.30 a.m. I got a call that my house was surrounded, where I slept and woke up. By the time I got back, four doses had demolished everything I ever had in life. I've never held a government position. I've never taken a government contract. I suffered to get to where I am. Like I told you before, I am a product of poverty. I'm probably one of the first people from my family to ever build a house. They demolished my houses with an ex-party order. Ex-party order. Which means you were never heard on the market. Never. Never heard. Never. No process was brought before me. You said they. It means that you can link it to the, the government? The system. I have investigated the matter. 
I know everyone that was involved. I'm just waiting for time. A tough war is not fought in a rush. It's fought with time. The right time will come. And I'll take justice for it. The, the court won't give anybody justice. Anybody that sits around the court, sit on top of law, yet orchestrate political activities, should be seen as a politician. But have you gone before that court? I, I don't need a legal justice. Because you could have gotten compensation if you had I don't need before. compensation. I'll take justice at the right time. I'm telling you, we need to go after this government and declare them enemies of the state. The way they are dealing with this country and the way they are going about things, they don't mean well for this country. And NDC is the only solution to Ghana's problems now, as we stand. In whichever shape and form, you need the NDC to rise up. And you need the NDC to go and confront these people with men. Men who are willing to sacrifice themselves for a cause of justice. You see, you never appreciate what injustice means until you become faced or, or you come face to face with it. Look at the number of people who have died over the collapse of banks. Look at the number of people who they have just gotten out of jobs simply because you are NDC or you are affiliated to NDC. Contractors will not be paid just because they had contracts under NDC government. People are fired only because they've had you have anything to do with NDC. These are human beings. They are not. They are nothing but demons. They go after everything and anything as far as political expedience is concerned. We need to assemble a skill set of people, a team, well coordinated. We must take responsibility, wash ourselves over bitterness, come to the table and deal with this government. Look, I'm running for election. Whether I win or I don't win. The most important thing is that I have resolved in my mind that this is the time to confront this government. And I am willing to do anything, anything possible to ensure that Nanado goes home with shame. Goes home with shame? Yes. I am willing to do anything for this government and its appointees to understand that they haven't dealt with us fairly. When we were in government, a tall list could come how we used to take care of MPP people, including the sitting president. Even this radio good, what did they do to it? Because they must kill the voice that NDC has and open their stations. When we come, we'll collapse the stations. If anybody in the MPP feels that when we come to gov government, it will be anything reconciliation for many, they are jokes. Mustafa, you do know we are in a democracy, right? They are joking. You do know we are in a democracy, They will have a right? palm of flesh. They will, look, whatever they have done to us, we will cycle them and deal with them one by one. I'm telling you, unless some of us are not alive, so I'm just saying that we need to come out of this reorganization devoid of disunity, devoid of breaks, devoid of anger. We need to understand that there is a bigger picture. And the bigger picture is to save a country, Ghana. Ghana. We need to save Ghana. These people, they respect laws. You have no idea. You have no idea. But, but that doesn't mean... Because there, there's a democracy to protect. Yes. 
there is yes. there is a one um, there is um, what one you're suggesting protect. what you're suggesting for example if you're threatening a media house at this threatening the closure of media houses at this time first of all what will be your basis secondly first of all secondly do you know the threat to be posed into a, uh, our democracy if you go on the same tangent that you are complaining about you know you know i like i said if you don't suffer injustice you don't appreciate what it is. I'm telling you, people have suffered under this government. If you go on the streets and you ask every Ghanaian to come and tell you their experience with this government, your head will blow up. I know where I'm coming from. And I'm saying that we need to rise up as a party. Whatever you may have suffered before, you need to come and sit on the table for us to rescue a country called Ghana. And you require the NDC to be well prepared, well set up to confront systems. NDC didn't lose elections. They didn't rig. They stole the verdict. MPP stole the verdict. We must not allow that to happen again. Is that why you're offering yourself? Yes. To offer operations for the party. Operations? Yes. We must be able to analyze properly and understand the enemy we are dealing with, the opponent we are dealing with. Mm. Because if you don't know your opponents well, you misfire. We must analyze the issues. We must analyze the trends. And we must fire. We must organize properly and move forward. Look, for every troop, you require orderliness, you require discipline, and you require command. Are you a security person? I'm offering myself as a deputy general secretary of the party. But you in into security. I don't know. But I'm because saying it, that... It, 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 from everything you said, it all sounds security. I'm saying that for every setup, you require order. Mm -hmm. You require discipline and you require command. We must put our constituencies together with the needed authority to confront and resist. And that's what you're offering that is to what help I'm the, offering party for the party do. Yes. That is what I want to contribute to the table. The planning table of 2024. Fortunately, we have a president for whose reason Ghana is still here today. We have a former president whose calm disposition is the reason Ghana is alive. It took John Muhammad to save Ghana. If it was JM who did what Nanado did, this country would have finished. And most of us who are radicals, we are pained because we didn't agree with those positions. But JM, as he, has, as he is, saved this country. And I believe that, look at what is happening today. Go to the streets of Accra. You don't require a revolution or a coup d'etat. You don't need it. I love We've passed there. No civilized country should go through that process. But these people must leave. They must leave. It's a must. You see, Nanado being hooted at in his own hometown, in his own backyard, Ashanti region is purported to be the World Bank of MPP. That school of thought is deviated because everyone is exposed to the reality. The reality is that the country made a mistake. The reality is that we have allowed somebody who should not be in government to come to power. So I'm offering myself with my experience. I've served under the late Dr. Komreji, mm. the General Mosquito Yabuat Injan regime. I've served them diligently. I've served the system. I've served Volta region. I was born in Oti region. 
Okay, I'm a Basari by tribe from the northern region. Mm -hmm. And I schooled and did my politics in the Volta region. What you also need to do is that I have been born, I was born into a traditional home. Raised in Islam. By the grace of God, I'm today almost a pastor. By the grace of God. A pastor. Now, to do politics, you need to understand culture dynamics, social dynamics. You need to understand the pulse of these factions that we have in our society. You need to understand how culture comes to play with politics. Mm -hmm. So when you take the whole of OT region, the whole of Northern region, the whole of Volta region, you have a deputy who understands the culture, understands behavior. In this country, every region you belong to has their unique cultural tendencies that come to play politically. So with this huge experience and exposure, I'll be able to work effectively with my boss and any other colleague that I have to help make the operation and the administration of the NDC stronger and effective. You need courageous people who can put order at the constituencies. The NDC is a system. No individual but must outgrow the system. Anytime you allow an individual to outgrow the system, the system is not relevant. So you need people who will put the checks and balances and to put orderliness at the constituency level. You need people who have the eyes to understand that an action is a possible conflict in one constituency or the other and to dispatch teams to go and resolve issues before they affect the system. Unfortunately today, if you look at the constituency election we are going, you have A having a group, B having a group, and we haven't been able to resolve those issues. They have their its own consequences. But that's normal when you have MPs who may feel threatened by one person or the other, of course. You, should you not know feel, the number one rule of uh, politics is self-preservation. You should not feel threatened if you are in touch with your system and you have an authority of the system who is able to deal with issues with equity, fairness, balance, you know, outcomes. So devoid of who is involved, you put the system first. Yes, there are issues of conspiracy in politics. Sometimes you must do conspiracy. Some other times you must eliminate by, by tactics and all of that. But the system must be put first. And NDC is a very strong political party today. A party that is not just a political party. It's a destiny career. NDC carries a whole lot of destinies. And that boat must not sink. We must do everything to keep the boat afloat. Any mistake affects a whole variety of destinies. Our constituency executives, our branch executives, everybody, regional executives, go to the constituencies. This, and this election that just ended. People sold their houses and their cars just to run an election. People are going through to borrow money to run election for the love of the party. So you need people who sit up there and understand that what is on the ground is a burden. It's a responsibility. You must serve selflessly. And I dove my heart to my former boss, the late Dr. Komreji, who instilled nothing but principles in our minds. He trained us how to work without focusing on ourselves. We offered ourselves for the party, being encouraged. We made mistakes and were corrected. And we are willing to serve this party again. 
bringing everyone on the table is very key to the strength of the party. We may disagree with one another, mm. but you need leadership that says, let's bridge the gap. Put the flocks together. The one that, you know, are going astray, bring them back home. If you take out one, you have reduced our numbers. You need a leadership that is willing to do some of these things. And the NDC will be stronger. You need people who will listen to the constituencies, listen to the branches. You need people who will go down and understand what the issues are. They require energy. I'm not saying that we have people who are, haven't been able to do that. But we don't have the same level of energy. We have different skill sets, energy levels. Whatever, you can do one thing, I can do the other thing. But put people at their right places and we'll be very good. So as a Deputy General Secretary, we need to also go and do analysis in our constituencies of what we call stakeholdership. So elections, elections are built from stakeholdership. So it's a basket of indicators. Okay. So what is the strength of the party? What are the strengths of the candidates that are coming for parliamentary, other issues, contests, fallouts, bridge the gaps? Who are the people that have deflected or who are the people who are hurt? There will be some people who will be hurt one way or the other. You need to identify these people and bring them to the table. Even those who have offended the party, at some point, you need to bring them back to the table. You look at the chieftaincy issues, you look at religious indicators, and when you do all of this, you then look at your results in the past periods. And you synchronize all these factors, and you can come to one conclusion that you are winning an election in one constituency or the other. You require executives who rise up and to do analysis and to advance reconciliation approach to say, let us protect our MPs. But let's not create confusion. Those who are willing to contest them, let them come on board and help the MPs. When we win election, let's move together. Because it is very dangerous to open the Pandora box. When we have, as of today, automatically 36-36, because they are targeting one person in NDC at the court. Another one of theirs is gone out. So 36, 136, 136. We should not open the Pandora box as an opposition. That's a dangerous suggestion to make. Let's hold on to parliament and add more numbers. Are you suggesting that the MPs that are there currently no. should not be contested? No. No. They should not be contested. I'm not saying they should not be contested. I haven't said so. But I'm just saying that mm -hmm. we should protect our system. Okay. At the end of the day, if everybody understands the collective target, then you are not asking anybody not to contest. Mm. And that you are building a team for a target. So these are some of the suggestions that we we'll bring on board. Help the party build its systems. Mm. I've listened to you. Uh, have you ever been told that you sound uh, very aggressive? Aggressive? I don't know. But um, what I do know... N not in terms of the way you speak, mm. but the ideas you put out, the, your, your, the, the way you communicate, the kind of approach you are suggesting. Uh, advanced, yeah. So... Um, uh, I, 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 you know, where I grew from, hmm. I've gone through a lot of pain, a lot of training. Mm. Okay? And I only understand that when you are dealing with somebody who, if he gets the opportunity to put you on the ground, don't hesitate to put the person on the ground. Your battles must be fought very short and sharp. You must have a target and hit and go. Don't waste time on battles. Mm. If you prolong battles, you spend more. You have a lot of casualties. And I'm an operations person. 
I believe that for every activity, you must cut cost. Mm. You must save time. You must get your resource and move away. That's how I operate. Hmm. Operations. Yes. But some of these proposals that you put forward, mm. uh, you also admit yeah. that perhaps the person who is most likely to be a flag wearer seems to be somebody who will choose sometimes to concede rather than create a situation of co uh, chaos. You see, the biggest mistake we do is to think that it is a duty of a flag bearer to win election. He is our leader. He is our president. We need to protect him. We are the soldiers. Let's go to the ground and win him an election. He has a country to build. He has a country to build. We have to go and work and make him a president. Why are we looking up to him? For what? He has diplomatic missions to deal with. He has a whole variety of people to bring together. We have to deal with elections. The party should be strong enough to deal with elections. So I'm not aggressive, as people say the negative. I'm just someone that will look into your face and will tell you the truth. I'm just someone who took away from my heart fear at a very tender age. Because the biggest killer of every human being is fear. Don't confuse fear with humility. I don't fear issues. Two, I hate injustice. I don't like people to go through what they don't deserve. Mm. I want to see all of us dealing with ourselves with equity, a certain level of decross, respect, a certain level of affection, a certain level of love. I want to see a party that attends a member's funeral, irrespective of who that member was. Because the person was part of us. We shared common goals. Those are some of the principles I advance. Mm. And that is what determine my actions. And I act on the basis of who I'm dealing with. Mm. So when you are dealing with a larger opposition, Go with aggression. I, are you? Have you been speaking to the delegates about this? Yes, I have. What are they telling you? The D Day will show. The D Day I, will I show. I believe that I would be one of the deputy general secretaries to serve in the next administration. But it's also said that uh, uh, for, for a lot of people, majority one of the biggest determining factor nowadays is the amount of resources you have. Do you have a lot of? It? No, I don't think so. You don't think so? No. You don't think resources our, our are delegates not? are not corrupt anymore. Mm. They cannot be corrupt. You would have taken advantage of them on a certain day, but not always. We are going into an election where people need credible, strong characters to be positioned in the election. And they are going for money. We need money, but we balance it. I was trained organization. And in organization, money plays a role, but not all the time. Focus and vision determines a proper organization and commitment. And you must influence people to be committed to a cause. Don't despise people who just want to help. Bring people together. The party is too big. Everybody can do something to help. Let people do it. Coordinate them. Influence the processes towards the goal, and we will be fine. That is the message I tell my constituency executives. I don't have a godfather. I have nobody. But I have me. And my services will speak for me. And my skill set will speak for me. My personality will speak for me. And I know that I'm speaking to the heart of people, not their heads. That they should give me the opportunity as their Deputy General Secretary, to add up to the strength of the team that we already have and to make a difference. Normally, I wouldn't contest if I was contesting anybody because I believe that my colleagues have done um, four years. They deserve a second term. Mm. 
The only day I conceived this idea was when I realized my brother Peter Otekuno, who is who was the general secretary in charge of operation, aspired to move to the general secretary. And I felt that it was important we bring somebody from the ground to join the seniors that we have. Mm -hmm. And my first consultations were through the regional secretaries, who are my colleagues, because most of them were deputies together. Okay. So you, you know the current uh, regional secretaries? Almost okay. all of them. So I'd spoken to them, and they said none of them at the time wanted to go. Okay. In fact, um, uh, my brother, who is, who is trying to contest me now, Mm. was the first person I actually spoke to about my ambition. He has entered the race because the, the position is not guaranteed well, to anybody. Well, I think that that wasn't what we agreed on. Okay. It's a betrayal of a court. A betrayal and of a yes, court. The kind of friendship we have. He's my best friend. He's my brother. Okay. But, are, but he is not the only person no. in the race. There are several other people in the race. I understand. Not only the, not the two of you. Yes. So there's the also end, uh, 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 the, one of the current deputies who also. Wants so at the end of the day, what I'm saying is that if people were there, I wouldn't contest. I will still contribute anyway. Mm. But because the position became vacant, I decided that they needed some blend of characters. Let us come and help. And I've told you that when I'm elected, I will be with the constituencies. I'll be with parliamentary candidates who plan at the constituency levels for election. Because culture dynamics agrees that what happens in uh, Ashanti region may be different from what will happen in Volta region. We need to understand the dynamics at the grassroots, at the level of the constituencies. And we'll be fine. What if you are elected and you get a general secretary who does not agree with your approach? He will. Among the people who are contesting, they are all people that I believe have... Will agree with your yeah, approach. Yeah, they, they are all my friends. I, 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 for, unfortunately, they are all my big brothers and my friends. They know what I'm capable of doing. Mm. They know what I'm... That is why I'm not participating in anybody's um, an election, particularly from chairmanship to general secretaryship. I'm supporting everybody. Okay. But I must say that um, um, uh, in terms of chairmanship, I, 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 I have, you know, General was my boss, mm -hmm. and I have worked with him under the late Dr. Kwabraje very closely. Okay. He's one person I go to his house. He will pick my call on any day. I also believe that we have a very decent, gentle chairman. Mm -hmm. um, I respect him so much. So who am I going to support? I'm willing to work with anybody that they present. And I believe that. When we come out, we'll be stronger. Hmm. You don't have a choice within the... Uh, a choice. Yeah. yeah. In terms of who should be chairman, you have uh, general, the general secretary who you speak glowingly about. What I would have thought was that Council of Elders of the party would have resolved the situation we are today. Resolved how? I because believe that there, sh there shouldn't have been a contest. There shouldn't have been a contest. There, there should have been a discussion okay. to ensure that you know, we avoided what is happening today. I have seen a statement that the Council of Elders are warning mm. our, our seniors from... You but, know. But, but who said they didn't make that attempt? Because, of course, it's up to the individuals to decide whether yeah, or not... Yeah, so we are in. That is why... So if you are in a crisis, you cannot have people just disclosing their, their stance mm. anyhow. Like I said, I'm willing to have a very good relationship with all the national executives. Mm. Very good relationship. Very good relationships. In fact, most of them would wish that I have won. Because they know that my aggression is not in the negative sense. My aggression is in the positive sense. I want something done. Okay. We must achieve a resource. We are in it together. That is my, my, my business. My business is that let's not people suffer because of one person or the other. Let's shield ourselves. Let's not expose each other to injustice. You, you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. And let's allow the system which we all belong to to be paramount and to be our priority. If we do that, we will we would we would demystify a lot of the conflicts on the ground. Like I'm going to this context. I'm not going with bitter, I'm going with an open mind. You win or you lose. The mere fact that you had a privilege to go around the country meet new people, meet your party people, 
you see the love. It's enough. I receive calls day and night. And for me, that is enough for me. It means that people believe in me. It means that me too, the son of the poor woman, the poor man in Dambai, somebody believes that I have something to offer the nation. It's enough. Mm -hmm. It may not be today. It may be tomorrow. But I so believe that with the consultations I've done, with the kind of strategies I'm advancing, with the campaign that I have, I will be one of the Deputy General Secretaries of the NDC after the election. Mustafa, thank you. I'm grateful. Thank you for joining us today. I'm grateful. Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a last word for the delegates. I, I wish them all the best. I know they are tired because the, the timetable is compressed. Yeah. But so just don't give up. Let us get up. Mm. They should rise up again. We'll finish soon. But do you, uh, talking about the timetable, does it pose a problem for those of you who are contesting at the national level? Because you're now looking at, you, you have gone around, you know, spoken to delegates, now you have new delegates that you have to If you go. are prepared for something, you don't go complaining. Mm. You go through it irrespective of whatever side it presents. Okay. And I believe that the best test is what timetable they've given us. We'll go through it. We'll have best executives. We'll come out stronger. We'll come out willing and prepared. We'll come out organized. And the focus is to get rid of Nanadu and his people out of go government. Mm. The focus is to make NDC come back again and clean the mess. The focus is to make John Dramani Mahama a president again. You know, his coming back is not just for the purposes of correcting the wrongs, but it is good for academic purposes. It's good for research purposes. It deepens our democracy. It strengthens our democracy. It shows that the NDC doesn't give up. It shows our resilience. So NDC must be positioned, positioned in a way that will be the alternative and the government after 2024. Mm. And so our delegates should be inspired. They shouldn't get tired. We know we are stressing them up. They are receiving calls and those are our forms. We are coming to meet you. Please, we beg them. They should listen to us. Okay. And they should elect the best skill set of people for the party. Mm. And I beg them. Like I said, I'm not campaigning to them. I am appealing that they should make me their, general their deputy general secretary and test me, put me to test. I'm young enough to disappoint them. They will need pe people who are willing to be accessible. And they have Mustafa Gbande to deal with. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Mustafa Gbande is uh, an aspirant for the Deputy General Secretary position of the National Democratic Congress. Thank you, Mustafa. And I wish you all the best. Thank you. Yes. Uh, it's exactly 10 a.m. Before I go, just to remind you of uh, two things. First, if you're looking for naturally formulated herbal products to boost your immune system and improve your prostate health, then MaxMed Prostate Care Capsule is what you need. MaxMed Prostate Care Capsule is designed to improve your well-being. Is effective for prostate support. Yeah. If you have problems with urine retention or you urinate too frequently, or you are a man you suffer from weak erection, you need MaxMed Prostate Care Capsules. And also, it's a general rule that you need to ensure that your prostate is always in good health. So, very important, get yourself MaxMed Prostate Care Capsules. The number to call is 0558. Zero nine three one two three. Those are the numbers of Max.